Hi, I'm Ben with Filthy Motorsports and Crawlpedia.com, and in this video, I'll be going over coilover springs. So coilover springs have linear spring rates, unlike progressive spring rates found on trucks and SUVs. This particular one has a 125 pounds per inch rate, meaning it takes 125 pounds to compress this spring one inch. Coilover springs come in various rates, various free heights, and inner diameters. For a 2.0 coilover, you got to go with a 2.5 spring. A 2.5 coilover needs a 3.0 spring, and then a 3 inch coilover needs a 375 spring. So that's one common misconception or one common mistake that people make is they'll get a 2.5 spring for a 2.5 coilover and then find out that it doesn't fit. So with a linear spring rate, that makes calculating for springs very easy. It also provides good performance because in a performance setup, you don't really want your spring doing too much. Its job is to support the vehicle at the ride height that you want and basically, you know, keep it out, of, keep itself out of the equation. High performance shocks can be tuned for high velocity, low velocity, high force, low force. So you want your shock doing the work and all the springs needed to do is support the vehicle at the ride height that you want. So coilover springs sit on a lower spring plate that sits on the lower rod end on the shock. So they usually have a slot, so you can slide it in over the shaft, and then it settles in on the lower rod end. So with the spring sitting on the lower spring plate, this one happens to be a flat spring plate, uh, some companies make them raised, and that just changes the height of the spring that you need. Doesn't change performance, doesn't change ride height, you just have to count your springs accordingly. So you've got your lower spring plate, the spring sits on top of that. In a single spring setup, that's all that you have. You'll have your upper coil nut that comes down and snugs that up. In a dual rate setup, which is what we typically see, you'll have a uh, slider in the middle. And if you have a slider that has two different heights, the taller part points up and that's what stays on the shock cylinder. Second spring sits on top of that. And then on top of that, you have your coil nut. So when you first get your coilovers or your springs and you put them on the coilover shock, you'll, throw, you'll put them on like this, and then you'll bring your upper coil nut down until the springs are snug. That is your zero preload position. Preload is not the number of threads or inches of threads you have above it. Zero preload, preload is when the upper coil nut is snug against the springs and the springs are no longer loose. Uh, if you need to, make a mark on your coilover at that position because if you ever rotate it up, the springs will go loose when the shocks fully extend and you definitely don't want that. Uh, another thing to remember is most dual rate coilovers should come with stop nuts and that's another common question that people have is what are these nuts for? Well these are threaded on the shock cylinder and if you bring them down, as the springs compress, the slider will eventually contact them and that will stop the movement of the upper spring, thus transferring all of the energy and movement now to the lower spring. And so that's kind of, that's how you get your dual rate set up. You have your primary rate, which is, uh, for simplicity's sake, I usually call it just the upper spring, but it's really a combination of your upper and lower springs since they're working together. As soon as they engage the stop nuts, you take that upper spring out of the equation and you're just on your lower spring. So that's what the stop nuts are for. And you wanna bring them in uh, wherever you need to within your uh, up, up travel on a, on a rock crawler that has four to five inches of up travel. I might see these an inch, inch and a half above the slider. So you have your first inch and a half of up travel on the softer combination, and then it transitions to the heavier lower spring to help keep you from bottoming out. So those are stop nuts, also called secondary nuts. And that's what those are for. So when you're calculating for springs, uh, it's really nice to start with a known spring rate, so if you know what the vehicle weighs. Scales are great, uh, however, not very many people have those. Uh, if you have no way of weighing the vehicle, uh, if you call Filthy Motorsports, we've done just about everything. We can work with general descriptions of vehicles and, and take you from there. But a great way of finding out what the vehicle weighs is to put a known spring on it. So if you're watching this video because you have coilovers and the springs are not right or you need them changed or it's not, the vehicle's not sitting at the ride height that you want, um, this is going to really help you. Or if you're not at that stage, but if you can borrow a known set of high quality springs uh, from a buddy, even if they're gonna be way off, the vehicle's gonna sit too high, too low, having a known spring under the weight of the vehicle is a great way of calculating your known spring rate. So let's say we've got this 125 pound spring 
we put it on the vehicle, snug everything up, and settle the vehicle's weight down onto it. This is a 12 inch spring. So it's a 12 inch, 125 pound spring. If this spring compresses down to 10 inches under the weight of that vehicle, that means it is compressed two inches. And like I said before, the way that a linear spring rate works is it's 125 pounds for every inch. Two inches times 125 means that we've got 250 pounds of weight on that spring. Uh, must be a UTV or something pretty light because that's not a realistic number for a vehicle, but you see how the math works. So that's why you have to have a high quality spring that, uh, so the Kings, Pax, Blue Coils, Eibach, QA1, any of the name brand coils that usually run about 80 to 90 bucks per spring are going to be very consistent. Anything that is significantly less than that, you can't use because I've seen 100 pound springs actually spec out to 120 or 80 and then your numbers don't work. Uh, if you run a dual rate setup, I'll generally ask for those numbers on both the upper spring and the lower spring and use them both together and find an average between them. You'll find that even if it's the same spring top and bottom, they might compress different amounts depending on how the coilover is settling. And you will want to make sure that the stop nuts aren't engaged because if, they, if they're on the slider, you've uh, taken that load off of the upper spring. So make sure that the stop nuts are out of the way, measure the height of each spring under the weight of the vehicle, and then you figure out how much it's compressed, multiply it by the spring rate, and you've got a known corner weight. And that's the best way to do it. It's, it's very reliable if you use good springs, and if your measurements are accurate to within an eighth of an inch, and if you do it on both sides of the vehicle, you'll get very, very close. And using those numbers, we very rarely ever have to uh, change out springs more than once. So here's how the calculation works after that. Let's say that we've found that we have a thousand pound corner weight, and that's pretty realistic. We'll see a little bit more than that on the front of a Jeep or a rock crawler. We'll see that or maybe a little bit less in the rear, so it's normally around that point. Uh, remember that you don't count axles, tires, wheels. That's all unsprung weight. It's not supported by the springs. We're looking for the weight that the coilovers are supporting, and that's called sprung weight. So we've got a thousand pounds. Let's say that we're looking for a five inch ride height. And when we say a five inch ride height, we mean from the vehicle sitting under its own weight, we wanna have five inches of up travel and everything else being down travel. So five inches of shaft exposed is what we'll see. Um, in this example, we're gonna be using a 14 inch coilover. Uh, if you haven't decided what size coilover you need, make sure to jump over to our other video that'll show you how to calculate that. But 14s tend to be the most common. So in order to get a 14 inch coilover down to a five inch ride height, it has to squat nine inches. That's 14 minus five gets you nine inches of squat. Um, what we'll actually do is we'll call it 10 inches because I wanna give it a little bit of margin. We can always add an inch of preload to make up for it. If the number ends up being a little bit too light, it's already there. Uh, also, if you decided that you might wanna go down to a four inch ride height or play around with it, um, accounting for it now is really going to help and hopefully if this all works out you'll have a range of four to about seven inches of ride height to play with with the same springs. So we're going to call it 10. So a thousand pounds divided by 10 means that we'd need one single 100 pound spring. Well in a dual rate setup you have to multiply that by two because we've got two springs so we want each spring to compress half as much. In this particular example, it ends up being a 200 over a 200 pound spring. And that's, we, most rock crawlers end up within this range. Uh, rock crawlers, Jeeps with a 14 inch coilover, we might see 200 over 250 up front, we might see 150 over 200 in the rear. Um, your numbers should pass the smell test being somewhere within this range. Other things play into this. Uh, if the coilovers are directly under the engine or if they're six inches forward of the engine, it's a different amount of weight that's sitting on them. So. That's why you can't look at your buddy's rig and say, well, he's running these springs, so I'm gonna try those. It might be a good trial and error attempt, but a lot of things affect the amount of weight actually sitting on those coilovers. But if your numbers add up to, or come out to 400 over 500 on a Jeep, you're way off. It's gotta be somewhere close to this. So once we come up with this number, um, I usually do a double check on it to make sure that we're right, and it also gives us the chance to see if we can move one number up or one number down, see if we can get more separation. But you'll also need to remember that 200 over 200, even though it looks like two of the same springs, you actually have a transition in there, and I'll show you that in a second. So we're doing a double check here. We're using the numbers that we got to see where we're going to settle. So 
if we've got that same thousand pounds of weight, we've got a 200 pound spring, that 200 pound spring is gonna compress five inches. Well, in that example, we've got two of those springs, so we're gonna squat down 10 inches, which is what we were hoping for. We add an inch of preload, you end up with nine inches of squat, that's your five inches of ride height. So the numbers work out great. If you wanted to see if you wanted to sit higher or lower or see what happens when the weight changes you can change this number the corner weight you can increase it if you think it can be heavier and then see where you end up or you can change your springs change it to a 250 change it to a 300 see how things work out so the double check uh, also works as your trial and error uh, when you play around with it so uh, about the dual rate setup even though you've got a 200 over a 200 pound spring uh, like I said it's, it's actually not quite that uh, with a thousand pounds of weight, we're squatting down 10 inches because of the two springs are compressing together. Well, a thousand divided by 10 inches means that it's a hundred pound spring rate. It's acting like a hundred pound spring. So even though we've got two 200 pound springs, what you're going to feel and what the vehicle is going to be experiencing is a hundred pound primary rate and then a 200 pound secondary rate. So you have a hundred percent increase when the stop nuts hit the slider or the slider hits the stop nuts um, to help keep you from bottoming out. So the overall squat divided by the spring rate will give you your primary spring. So I know that was pretty fast, but if you watch the video a couple of times uh, and you go through it, we've also got all of these instructions, instructions posted on Crawlpedia to walk you through it. Other things that you have to keep in mind is um, you never want your lower spring, especially on a 14 or a 16 inch 2.0 coilover, you really don't want it to be lighter than 150 pounds, mainly because, and this is a 125 pound spring, under the weight of the vehicle, it'll bend. And especially if you've got two of these springs lined up incorrectly against each other with you know, pushing on the slider in opposite directions, you'll find that it creates an S shape and you'll be scraping the bottom of the shock and you'll be scraping the stop nuts. And that's just what light springs do. You can't buy a better brand of spring to avoid that. They will all do that just because they don't have that linear strength. So I usually try to keep my lower spring in the 150 or 200 pound range. If your numbers work out to being much less than that, you're going to have to add a tender spring that's going to eat up some of that slack and it'll uh, make your springs heavier. So it might not change your spring rate, but it'll make the spring stronger so you won't get as much rubbing. Uh, another thing you got to keep in mind, and this comes into play mainly with big diesel trucks with short coilovers or independent front suspension vehicles where it's leveraged, you have to watch out for coil bind. So if your springs are too light or too tall or you have to add too much preload into them, the, uh, as the spring compresses, and especially on a heavier spring where the coils are thicker, it'll reach a point where the springs completely bottom out, and that's called coil binding. When a spring coil binds, it transfers all of that energy into the upper coil nut, and this is where you'll see a cylinder. I've seen cylinders split in half, I've seen the, the, the threads uh, strip off, uh, I've seen all sorts of nasty damage caused by that, so you got to make sure that there's enough movement within your springs to allow for the amount of travel that you have on the coilover. Um, the, in, and in some cases, uh, again, independent front suspension, sometimes there's not enough spring in order to support the vehicle, so you might have a spring combination that's taller than the actual coilover. And what you do for that is you use a spring compressor, or in some cases with lighter springs, you can use a ratchet strap to strap it down to put it on the coilover so it's already preloaded once it's on that coilover. So there's a lot of other tricks that you can do depending on the situation. Uh, this should at least help with most setups, uh, most of the common setups. If you have something trickier, if you've got a headache and you're not really sure how to you know, figure out your particular case, Post a comment in the video, give me a call at Filthy Motorsports, uh, read more on crawlpedia.com. Um, hopefully that answers your questions. If I've missed anything, again, leave a comment uh, and we'll try and check those. Um, check out crawlpedia.com and thanks for watching.